Good evening. So welcome to the 20th anniversary spring concert of the Brattleboro Women's Chorus. Thank you. And happy Mother's Day weekend to you all. Thank you so much for sharing this really special concert and this whole year with us. We'd like you to know that the singers have voted to donate the proceeds from this weekend's concert with a woman from our community who is familiar to many of you. Her name is Robin Zegg. She's known for her comedy, improvisation, and sense of humor. You may have seen her clowning around at the Heifer Parade, teaching children at the youth theater, or bringing a smile to the elderly. Robin is now, unfortunately, fighting an aggressive carcinoma, which saps her strength and her finances. If you'd like to join us in helping Robin, there's a donation jar near the ticket booth. Thank you. We welcome back two of our favorite regular accompanists, Kathy Martin on piano and Lisa McCormick on guitar and ukulele. And I'm not sure where he is, but our favorite sound engineer, Julian McBrown, he might be back up in there. We also have Connie Green on flute, Maggie Smith on bells. Have both, they've both played with us in the past, and we're glad to have them back. And playing with us for the first time, we welcome Bill Ballard on the alto sax, and Jen Rice on marimba, Connie, Maggie, Bill, and Jen. So Becky, she's composed and arranged and set to music all of the music that you will hear in this concert. I just really can't tell you what a treat for us as singers this is to, act, to work not only with Becky, but to work with a composer of music that you sing is just a, a, it's a wonderful thing and it's a rarity and we've been so appreciative of it. Now just sit back and enjoy the ride through the many styles and voices of Becky's compositions. Becky Graver.
The next song we will sing is based on a poem by a Spanish poet, Antonio Machado. He is considered one of Spain's finest poets. Becky used some of the images from the English translation as she crafted her song. I will be reading this poem in the Spanish Castilian accent, which is how the poet would have pronounced the words. You have the English translation in your program. Anoche cuando dormía. Anoche cuando dormía, soñé bendita ilusión que una fontana fluía dentro de mi corazón. Di por qué acequía escondida agua, vienes hasta mí, manantial de nueva vida en donde nunca bebí. Anoche cuando dormía, soñé bendita ilusión que una colmena tenía dentro de mi corazón y las doradas abejas iban fabricando en él con las armaduras viejas blanca cerra y dulce miel. Anoche cuando dormía Soñé bendita ilusión que un ardiente sol lucía dentro de mi corazón. Era ardiente porque daba calores de rogar y era sol porque alumbraba y porque hacía llorar. Anoche cuando dormía soñé bendita ilusión que era Dios lo que tenía dentro de mi corazón.
Our next piece, Winter's Harvest, was set to music by Becky during the long, cold winter of 2015. When Becky called requesting permission to perform the work, the poet Jane Elston graciously agreed, saying it was a poet's dream to have their poetry appreciated in this way. Jane, who had been ailing for some time, hoped to hear the completed piece. She died in early April, and we sing it in her honor. Here is the full poem, Winter's Harvest, by Jane Elston. When winter comes, weighing us down with weariness and loss, natural wisdom whispers, lower yourself into the lap of silence where the shaman song is born. And allow me to cradle you close to my heart as soil cradles seeds and roots softly hum. You are thought making its way into form. You are fertility's gift of rejuvenation, the bearer of new life. In the womb of silence, you are winter's harvest. Chorus sings about emotions a lot. And we also sing about light and relationships. Our next two songs are about mothers and children. And both were inspired by experiences of two singers in our chorus. The next song, Our Whole Lives Long, was inspired by Lynette. <laughs> Lynette's experiences with her mother, Vivian, as her mother lives with dementia. 
Through all the changes, this couple, this pair, goes on singing together. There is a quote about the charm of music, that it soothes our soul. This song is soothing in its three-quarter time and helps us to do just that, to feel soothed. It also is conveying the tale, the tale that lies beneath, what a daughter might not always fathom and what a mother might not always comprehend. Their spaces are filled with vastly different trains of thought. Mothers are of long ago, her childhood. Daughters are current, her concerns for her mother's well-being. This song has touched many of our singers, and you may well see tears on our faces or feel them on your own. During our singing for you today, you'll hear the mother portrayed through the voices of half of our chorus, and the other half portrays the daughter. We have been honored to have Julia singing with us this year. She lives with her family and friend, Kathy, and she lives with dementia. When Kathy asked Julia how she felt about singing this song, she said, oh, this is so important. People have to know and understand how sad this is. And she said, singing is very important to me. Singing with these ladies is so wonderful. I love it. Julia, Kathy, Lynette, and many others here recognize the importance of not distancing ourselves from knowledge about dementia, perhaps from a, pre a past role or in a future role of being part of a couple facing dementia. In honor of Mother's Day, in honor of all the caregiving and receiving we are all capable of, in honor of Lynette and Vivian, in honor of Kathy and Julia and Julia's family, we sing Lynette and Becky's song.
I wrote this poem 12 years ago during a women's chorus session that included poetry workshops with Veranda Porsche. The poem reminds us that sharing nature's beauty with our children is a powerful way to connect, even in the tough times. I want to thank Becky for reviving this song and for composing such powerful music to this very simple poem. The Hawk. When I saw the hawk circling the house, I remembered that I forgot to tell. I remembered that my mother always told, stopped and reminded us of whatever surrounded us. As an ornery teen, I would roll my eyes and whine, oh, mom, I'm late, what? And so the hawk gives me another chance. Two days later, when I saw the northern lights, I called home. Will, I said, go outside. My son stepped out into the dark. And through the phone line, I could feel his awe. Thank you, Mom. Thanks so much. I won't forget. I won't forget to tell. Thank you, Hawk. Thank you, Lights. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Son.
Most concerts I'm asked to deliver the announcement speech, and uh, it gets a little tiring, so I decided to mix it up for our 20th this time, so you're going to have to bear with me here. A little ditty. So listen carefully. (laughs) Well, if you want to sing with us, you can, as long as you're at least 10. Cause there's a million reasons to join We know that there are And if you want to sing high, sing high And if you want to sing low, sing low And we've got middle parts too We want you to know You can join us in September On Wednesday nights or Thursday mornings Check our website for details or to make a donation, cause we're a nonprofit organization. Uh-huh. We're happy uh-huh. to give back to Robin's Ed. And if you want to hear more, well, just wait. We've got a brand new CD for you. You can buy one after the show, it's easy to do. <laughs> Our next song is called You. It's a three-part partner song that Becky wrote to celebrate friendship. Thank you for coming and celebrating our 20th year.
The next song is based on a poem by Martha Postlethwaite. Martha serves as a Methodist minister at the Recovery Church in St. Paul, <coughs> Minnesota, one of the largest recovery ministries in the United States. St. Paul's Recovery Church ministers to those seeking recovery, growth, and healing, and reaches more than 1,000 people each week through worship services, daily meetings, and events featuring guest speakers. The following is Martha's poem, Clearing. Do not try to save the whole world or do anything grandiose. Instead, create a clearing in the dense forest of your life and wait there patiently until the song that is yours alone to sing falls into your open cupped hands and you recognize and greet it. Only then will you know how to give yourself to this world so worthy of rescue. Thank you. 
The next song that we'll sing is based on a writing of Pierre Teilhard de Chardin. He was born in 1881 and became a Jesuit priest and a paleontologist, perhaps an odd combination. He wanted to explore both the science of evolution and the mystery of faith. He combined the focused life of a priest, intellectual and mystic, with traveling the world to unravel the origins of the human race. He believed that all matter was infused with spirit, sacred, and the material and spiritual world were ever unfolding, evolving toward a positive future. Sadly, his ideas were not accepted by the Catholic Church until after his death in 1955. His insight into the ever-evolving flow of history helped him, even in the midst of tragedies, to remain hopeful, to trust in nature, to trust in God. And by these words, he offers us that same hopefulness. Above all, trust in the slow work of God. We are quite naturally impatient with everything to reach the end without delay. We should like to skip the intermediate stages. We are impatient with being on the way to something unknown, something new. And yet it is the law of all progress that it is made by passing through some stages of instability and that it may take a very long time. And so I think it is with you. Your ideas mature gradually. Let them grow. Let them shape themselves without undue haste, as though you could be today what time, that is to say grace and circumstances, acting on your own goodwill, will make of you tomorrow. Only God could say what this new spirit gradually forming within you will be. Give our Lord the benefit of believing that his hand is leading you and accept the anxiety of feeling yourself in suspense and incomplete.
We want to thank you all again for coming to the concert this evening, allowing us to share Becky's music and our singing with you. It has been special to sing Becky's songs as part of the celebration of the 20th anniversary of the Brattleboro Women's Chorus. We have all enjoyed the music, been moved by it, and hope you have also. Our last song of the program, and this really is our last song, we have no hidden encores in wait, <laughs> is one that Becky wrote in 2009, prompted by a spring song competition on Prairie Home Companion. She didn't get a cheerful song finished in time to enter that competition, but at least the deadline had gotten the creative process started, and we all know we could use a nudge now and then. While the weather this season has been springing up and down more than usual, the crocuses have risen from their beds, we do hear the birds singing in the dawn, and the sunshine is pulling us forward. So we leave you with a cheerful song and hope you can take the music and its celebration of life around us with you as we all stride on.